Hello everyone. Today we will discuss how to look at a MRI brain and what do we actually mean by all this. Uh, you know, you have heard about terminology like T1 weighted, T2 weighted. What do they actually look like and what do we do? So what I'll do today is I'll share with you a normal MRI image. I will share with you a normal MRI image and uh, show you what we see on a computer and when we are looking at an MRI image. So with you I have a T2 weighted transverse image. I will I will go from bottom up and show you what all we are seeing. This is a T2 weighted image. Now key thing that I want you to remember here is T2 weighted means that you are able to see the CSF as a uh, bright signal. If you see CSF as white that is T2 weighted image. Another point I want you to remember is T2 weighted image is better for pathology. You can see brain edema in this uh, better because fluid appears bright, so pathology appears white on a T2 weighted image. Now I want you to see with me. This is at the bottom of the level. We are able to see the spinal cord. And these are the nasal turbinates. This is the nasal septum, the nasal openings, the subcutaneous fat. You can see as a bright signal. Fat appears bright on both T1 and T2 weighted images. And as I go up, I want you to appreciate these are the cerebellum and you can see the medulla and can you see two black dots? These are the flowoids. Now flowing blood appears as a flowoid on an MRI image. So these are the vertebral artery flowoids that you are able to appreciate. This is the area of the mastoid. You, are, you don't see any fluid here. This is normal. This is clivus, clivus and this is where you would look for a, a potential tumor sometime and we go up go up and can you see the vertebral arteries they appear to merge this is the medulla and you can see the cerebellum as i go up you can see the seventh eighth nerve complex and you can see the basilar artery now basilar artery and if i go up this is the vermis cerebellar vermis middle cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle you can see the pons and if you take a careful look you can actually appreciate the fifth nerve arising from the uh, root entry zone of the fifth nerve from the pons and you can now see flow void here which are the internal carotid artery flow voids this is the cavernosal part of the internal carotid artery you can see the globe now and you can appreciate the extraocular muscles you can see the temporal lobe now temporal lobe as i go up now you can see temporal lobe and you can start to see the temporal horn this white area is the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle this is the beginning of the midbrain now you can see the internal interpeduncular fossa you can see the basilar artery here and you can see the cerebral peduncles and you can see uh, the med medial part of the temporal lobe which is the uncus you can see the uncus here and this is the ambient system this is the area of the ambient system this is the area of the quadrigeminal plate system quadrigeminal plate and this is the area of the interpeduncular fossa and if you look at the posterior part i want you to see a flow void because of the this is a triangular flow void which we see which is the superior sagittal sinus and cerebral peduncles this is the area of the substantia nigra these are the red nuclei area of the red nuclei and if you uh, take a careful look this is the area of the aqueduct aqueduct of sylvius and this is where you can see the optic chiasma optic nerves optic chiasma you can appreciate the optic chiasma here and you can see the middle cerebral artery flowoids middle cerebral artery flowoid and this is the ambient system so this must be the posterior cerebral artery flowoid as I go up, as I go up, now you can actually see the uh, head of the corded nucleus here. And if I go up, you can see the interventricular septum, the septum pellucidum. You can see the part of the corpus callosum. This is the posterior part of the corpus callosum. And this is the thalamus. This is the anterior horn of the internal capsule, genu, the posterior horn, putamen, put putamen, and the medial part is the globus pallidus. If, if you see here carefully, this is the part of the sylvian fissure, sylvian fissure well seen here and this is the insular ribbon, insular cortex. Okay, And few white dots that we appreciate here, these are nothing but perivascular spaces or uh, space uh, worker organ spaces that you normally appreciate in the MRI brain. And if you see this, this is the part corresponding to the anterior commissure. Okay, now this is T2 weighted axial. So what is flare? Now, in front of you now I have a sequence called as FLARE. What is FLARE? FLARE stands for Fluid Attenuated Inversion Recovery Sequence. Now, it is a type of, now I want you to appreciate this. On a T2 weighted image, grey matter looks white while the white matter appears black. This is the white matter, it looks black on a T2 weighted image. Now, let me compare this with FLARE. FLARE, white matter is again dark. So, FLARE is nothing but a T2 weighted image. Now, I want you to remember. T2 weighted image 
in which csf signal has been suppressed you do not see water here the water signal has been suppressed it becomes black and if there is any edema it would look like a bright area so there is flare fluid attenuated inversion recovery sequence we do it to look for pathologies or edema in the brain now you can appreciate in the ventricle you can actually see the choroid plexus now this is the choroid plexus and this is a flare sequence flare we we do it uh, routinely in all brain images and let us see this is a coronal image now coronal image now coronal tetubated image you can see the maxillary sinuses you can see the nasal turbinates you can see the uh, nasal septum the area of the olfactory bulbs corpus callosum area of the corpus callosum in ventricles interventricular septum you can see the sylvian fissure the gray white matter differentiation you can see the seventh eighth nerve complex seventh eighth nerve complex and you can see the cerebellum and the, the area of the tentorium in the fox cerebri like this okay now so what we have seen is we have seen t2 weighted axial image flare t axial and coronal now we also do a t1 weighted image this is t1 weighted image uh, and in t1 weighted image you see uh, medulla the vertebral arteries the cerebellum as i go up you can see the fourth ventricle basilar artery the seventh eighth nerve complex these are the fifth nerve that we can see this is the temporal lobe temporal lobe pons middle cerebellar peduncle fourth ventricle cerebellum okay this is the part of the aqueduct that i can see these are the uh, uh, colliculi or the tectal plate this is the you can see the optic chiasma here optic chiasma the part of the uncus the lat lateral part of the temporal lobe and you can see the optic nerve here medial rectus lateral rectus well seen here on the uh, orbital image and fat appears white on a t1 and t2 weighted image both so this is the fat that you can see as a fatty layer which you are able to see as a bright uh, part on a t1 weighted image now why this is t1 why not flare because you see the white matter appears white so on a t1 weighted image white matter appears white and gray matter appears gray it reverses on t2 flare is nothing but a t2 weighted image in which csf signal has been suppressed so this is a t1 weighted axial image so what all you need to see now you would want to see any other sequence so the sequence in front of you is a gradient echo image now t1 and t2 images are uh, believed to be spin echo images and this is a gradient echo sequence we do gradient echo to particularly to look for blood products or calcium which would show uh, signal suppression on a gradient sequence and you can appreciate some hemosiderin or any calcium i think calcific lesion better on a gradient sequence this is part of a routine mri brain routine mri brain we also include a sagittal image this is a sagittal t2 weighted image you can see now this is the part of the mid brain this is the mammillary body this is the superior colliculi inferior colliculi aqueduct fourth ventricle third ventricle pons medulla spinal cord prepontine cistern you can see the basilar artery cerebellum splenium of the corpus callosum corpus callosum and you are able to see the spinoid sinus this is the clivus this is the atlas this is you can see the odontoid process of c2 vertebra c3 like this so you not only you do transverse images in mri mri is a multiplanar image in which you do coronal and sagittal images as well and you do gradient sequence to look for hemosiderin or for blood products now in a routine mri brain this is a uh, we we also do diffusion imaging which has two parts we do a diffusion weighted image which is called as dwi and we do adc image which is called as apparent diffusion coefficient map in front of you now you have a adc image now in this any on a very superficial note i want you to know if there was any infected area it would look dark on a adc map and if i do diffusion image so this is how a diffusion image would look like this is a dwi image on a dwi in fact would appear bright because this is a area of uh, diffusion restriction and on adc map the corresponding area would look dark okay so we do all this put together in a mri brain a routine mri brain means transverse images sagittal images coronal images and diffusion image flare image t1 t2 and we also do gradient this is what we call as a routine mri brain
Okay, so what I feel is, uh, I, uh, we as a MBBS doctor or an undergraduate, sometimes we are not even clear on the terminology. So I thought I'll give you a visual impression on what ex exactly we mean by MRI pain. Okay, thank you.